Welcome to Worship at Bethesda, Pentecost 9, Breathing with Jesus. Come on along, now is the time to worship.
calm our souls, and refresh us with the breath of your peace. In Christ, as we draw to his table, draw us closer to you and to one another in the bonds of Christ's love. We pray in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel tells us that all who come seeking God's grace and God's peace are drawn by his spirit breath and are welcomed and encourage to gather here in worship and at the table of our Lord. As we worship this morning, we again acknowledge that for thousands of years the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples have walked gently on the land where we, the Settler Church, now live, work, worship, and play. We seek a new relationship with the First Peoples, our one based in honor and respect, and we thank them for their hospitality. Turning to being Bethesda this morning, uh, again, a reminder that uh, you are welcome to put a G or an R for reader or reader on the calendar uh, in the narthex. Uh, it is there and there is slots for the one week remaining in July and all of August, uh, both for readers and the Ministry of Lay Readers. Uh, the fabrics that you see are the gathering fabrics to be used in our uh, signature Bethesda Signatures quilt. And if you'll see there, there are in fact uh, fabrics be woven into the quilt with signatures attached for each of the seasons of our church year. There's uh, one for Advent, there's one for Christmas, there's one for Epiphany, for Lent, for Easter, for Pentecost, for Creation Sundays, one for the signatures to go on, and as the quilt takes place under the crafting of the reed, and our participation by signing more and more of the patterns and the significance of the patterns will come clear and guide our way to worship as the quilt is assembled. On consultation at this week, a suggestion made at Council that we also allow for uh, the, the uh, fixing of household names of persons who have gone on to be with the Lord to include them in uh, the signatures. That will be done in a slightly different way, but uh, we recall in Hebrews uh, Paul's reminder that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And in our Old Testament passage, we're, we are called upon to remember that the ancestors are with us so in that, uh, in that guidance, uh, our signatures will include those present on Sunday mornings, the wider footprint of those who have had an attachment to Bethesda, as well as ancestors of those who have gone before us. So stay tuned as our quilt continues to uh, come into uh, prominence in our worship and guiding our life. Our opening hymn this morning is Away in a Manger, number 69. And yes, there'll be an exploration of why Away in a Manger in July. For now, for this moment, stand and sing if you're able to, if you're comfortable doing so, and enter into this lovely song.
Please be seated. God, our Creator, who calls us together, meets us now as God, the Redeemer, calling us to hear the Word of God, given by the breath of God, for us to hear. Let us pray. Loving God, as the Scripture is breathed and spoken, may we take it in, may it inform our lives and our journey. Help us to be hearers and doers of the word. Amen. Our first scripture reading, John 1, is shared to all of us today by Christine. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. Thank you, Christine. And bookending the presence of Christ before being incarnated, and then in Matthew. The word of Christ is prior to ascension, beginning and the end of our cosmic Christ's earthly journey. From Matthew's Gospel. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples set up for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands that I gave you. And lo, I am with you always. Yes, and time. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And now may the words of my God, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord our God, we pray. Amen. And so this morning we journey in our summer and Pentecost theme of just breathe. Prior to being away last Sunday and the sneak preview, I have uh, a couple of photos from uh, the blessing of a uh, vacation 40th anniversary trip. Uh, I'll just say this much, it involves a journey path, some slippery slopes, and a view well worth it to be shared next Sunday. We began uh, two weeks ago in a mini-series, uh, within a series, of looking at the breath of life through the uh, filter of God of the Trinity as seen in our stained glass window, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit or Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We began two weeks ago with looking at the breath of God or Ruach of God as part and parcel of creation. Beginning with Genesis and uh, that scripture which 
uh, brings to us the song of creation, the spirit stirring over the waters of God as creator. Our two guidebooks, uh, One Breath by James Nestor, it's pointed out after pages and pages of inquiry as to the unique qualities of breath and its impact on health. He got to a point where he had to confess there was something more going on in breath and all these scientific interactions, something not explicable, something not able to be reduced to the, to the biology and the mechanics, and he landed on that mystery of breath is energy or in faith terms, spirit. Our other guidebook, Breath as Prayer, we'll be turning to uh, more frequently, uh, a little bit today, but in the weeks to come, and a uh, more obvious and direct connection between breath and prayer. So God the Creator and breath, and now today God the Redeemer and breath. Christine has launched us in to Jesus and breath or breathing with Jesus in reading our first bookending scripture from John's Gospel, often called the Prologue. John's Gospel, written and admittedly with a very a distinctive theological uh, agenda and filter. While each of the four Gospels has their own perspective in bringing the story of Jesus. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke uh, together uh, are, are called the uh, three Gospels with the same source, uh, but John is somewhat apart from them. Uh, John has a different audience in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John's audience, written a little bit later than the other three Gospels, has definitely a Greek audience. A Greek audience in the, getting to be the wider world by then. And so John speaks with Greek philosophical and faith terms to gain an audience. A big ticket word for the Greek audience in Greek philosophy was this word, for word, logos, which means word. And so in the scripture from John's Gospel, we hear God saying, the scriptures through John saying, the logos of God was there before creation. The word of God was there before creation. The logos was with God. Logos was gone, and the Logos has come in to be the light of humankind. So John makes, no, uh, makes it a clear connection that this Logos, a word so familiar to the Greeks, is by declaration and by lived reality, Jesus Christ himself. And so that breath of God existing in relationship in the Trinity before creation itself came to be. That word of God, that breath of God, breathing with Jesus as Logos, is also present as the story continues to unfold. You might recall early in uh, Luke, uh, the visitation to Mary, that she will conceive and bear a child by the Holy Spirit, and she will call his name in Jesus. But also in Luke's Gospel, there is the side story of Elizabeth and Zechariah and Jesus' cousin, in fact, John the Baptist. Elizabeth and Zechariah were past the normal uh, childbearing years, so John the Baptist story also has in it somewhat of the miracle element or supernatural or at least beyond 
common appearances. Well, you might remember that Zechariah, faithful uh, attender at the temple, highly regarded elder, when being told that Elizabeth would bear a child, you may remember what happened. He didn't believe it. An angel visited Zechariah and said, because of your unbelief, you will not be able to speak. So Zechariah's breath was shortened in terms of being able to speak. Then, farther on, Elizabeth's son is born, and it is only then that it is declared in Scripture that Zechariah regains the fullness of breath and sings a song of praise to the Lord. Breathing with Jesus as the story of his cousin John the Baptist comes to life. And then Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel and the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. And Mary, upon greeting Elizabeth, says, Behold your handmaiden. And Elizabeth declares and shouts out, How blessed am I! And it is told to us that the child in the womb was joining in by movement and silent praise. So Elizabeth's breath and voice declares a great thing is about to happen. And that Mary declares in the Magnificat, you have blessed your handmaiden, and salvation will come to the rich, and more pointedly, to the poor. And then the moment arrives. The incarnate Christ is born. The pre-existing word comes into the manger and is born. And so, away in the manger, You'll notice that the stall, and where today you may remember it, is in fact the uh, my Advent stall, with white for the color of light and a blue candle of Advent. And so on this day, when we think of the breath of God specifically in Christ, we want to say that that breath of God, that breath of Jesus, is part and parcel his full humanity. Though we no doubt all love away in a manger, it has within it a major theological error that we want to correct today. Can anyone guess what line that error is found in? Away in a manger, sleep on the bed, Way in the manger, no crying he made. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So very wrong. In fact, you can find many articles dissecting this hymn, spending a lot of time on this phrase, no crying he made. Because of course, a baby's health is seen in the baby's crying. Jesus' divinity seen in sharing in that healthy crime. It may come as a surprise to 2024 persons to know that the early church, in wrestling with Jesus' two natures, unlike most of the so-called modern era, from about 1700 onwards, the early church had no problem with Jesus' divinity. The early church's struggle was with Jesus' humanity. In fact, there was a whole uh, group uh, called the Docetists, or the uh, name that was attached to it, Docetism, which simply means from the word doka, meaning appearance. The idea being that many persons thought that Jesus only 
appeared to be human, but wasn't truly human as the Nicene Creed declares. Jesus in the Docetus only was human in appearance, but not in reality. Well, the church rightly, of course rightly, saw that that needed to be corrected, that needed to be put aside, and Jesus' full humanity declared and lived out as well, of course, as Jesus' divinity. And so, our invitation today is to breathe in with Jesus, even breathing in the breath of God with the baby Jesus, as crying he did be, as a fully human and fully healthy child, with breath and crying part of that humanity that we take such great comfort in, in knowing that as the scripture declares, Jesus regarded humanity as a thing not to be put aside, but to be entered into. And our breathing with Jesus continues. We are told early on that uh, Jesus was led to the desert to be tempted, to be tried, to be placed on a, a period of testing for ministry, for preparation, and um, in this encounter, with the evil one and the forces of darkness, betrayed, I think, creatively and correctly here as uh, someone who would seek to befriend us, who sought to befriend Jesus, but was not speaking the will of God. And in that, in that first trial, Jesus is invited to turn stone into bread and Jesus replied, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Or in the context of our summer series, the core of our lives, the core of what gives breath and life meaning is not arbitrary, but is based in this declaration of the Word of God as the breath of God and as the bread of God. So we breathe with Jesus on hearing and taking in the Word of God. <clears throat> Next up, breathing with Jesus and others in baptism.
They saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So the words of God, the breath of God in this baptism. And a few comments uh, about the artistic merit of this particular take on Jesus' baptism. I think you can all be excused if you're thinking like I did, that the voice of Jesus was a little bit off-putting, at least it was to my ears. Don't really know what they were going for, but I'll just say that out, out in front. I like their portrayal of John the Baptist of being this kind of wild and woolly preacher, which the scripture says he was. I really like the opening sequence with children playing and their breath as creative beings of crying and shouting. A note that some church people might want to pay attention to when it comes to the place of children in worship and in baptism. But of most important is clarity of that voice of Jesus saying, it is right and proper for me to be baptized here by you, John. Another word of Jesus, another breath of Jesus of identification, not just with John's preaching agenda, but with all of us as broken needing to be made whole or to be cleansed as baptism typifies and needing the spirit and then that clarity the voice of the internal relationship between Jesus and the creator and the voice of God saying this is my son whom I am well pleased we breathe with the breath of Jesus in baptism. The story continues to unfold. The breath and the teaching of Jesus continues to be heard. Also in Luke's Gospel, we may recall one of the first instances of Jesus' teaching at the synagogue. And those who say, and there are many, who say you can function as a Christian believer, but you do not need to be with other believers in church. You can worship God anywhere. That is all true. Part of our makeup is to be gathered with others. And so it was with Jesus. One of his first stops along the way was in the synagogue. And here is depicted his reading from the scripture of Isaiah and in doing so he took these words of Isaiah that my servant shall declare the favorable year of the Lord and in so saying it was clear that the breath of Jesus the words of Jesus speaking to himself and you may recall as our depiction illustrates Many were not pleased that Jesus would self-identify as this Messiah, as the one bringing the more inclusive good news of the gospel. And so we breathe with Jesus in his voice of authoritative teaching. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus takes a breath shouts out to the first disciples on the boat, I see you are fishing. Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, or fishers of people. John, Peter, Andrew, they all hear these words. They are all taken up in the breath of Jesus and follow him. And from that modest beginning, Wonderful things happen. And as was the sharing of the scripture role in the synagogue, so too 
Jesus' breath and words carried weight, carried conviction, carried a call to respond. And so that breath and word of Jesus comes to us here at Bethesda today. And it says, come, follow me, and I will make you to fish for people. We breathe with Jesus as he calls us, and we respond. One of the most well-known teaching sequences, as it has been collected and shared in the gospel, is the so-called Sermon on the Mount. Well, it's actually a series of sermons on the Mount, a series of sayings, and within that sermon, we may perhaps be familiar with what is known as the Beatitudes, or the Blessed Arms. And so the breath, the word of Jesus, in declarative form, in ways perhaps unheard of at the time, certainly widening and uh, enlarging, was blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those whose heart truly sees God's presence. So we breathe the breath of Jesus in seeking to find ourselves to be those within those of blessedness, humble in spirit, seeking peace, and above all else, seeking the presence of God in our hearts and breath. word of Jesus went forth in teaching and also in caring and also in beyond the normal expectation. We read in, eight, in Luke's gospel Jesus was on the Sea of Galilee a storm came forth and I like this particular translation Jesus rebuked the wind as if he had a familiarity with creation. And so he did. And so he does. Jesus called the wind to be still. The breath of Jesus met the breath of the wind and brought calm, silence, and stillness, and safety for those in the boat. We've taken the breath of Jesus in our own storms, whatever they may be. There was another instance, as the story unfolds, familiar but perhaps needing to be more unfamiliar this morning or newly familiar. Jesus' ministry of inclusion meets resistance. Jesus' ministry of a Messiah that is not a political Messiah just for Israel, but for all of God's people, brings him in conflict with the emperor's representative, Pilate. And Pilate confronts Jesus, asking him to say, some say you are the king of the Jews. What do you say? But to this moment, to this moment, Scripture tells us that Jesus initially did not speak. And so there's a call to be mindful of our own breath, of our own words. Remember that word from Ecclesiastes. There is a time to speak and a time to keep silence. And in this moment, it was the holy time of Jesus to keep silent. And so we breathe with Jesus in being mindful of how powerful our words and breath truly can be. And 
Jesus eventually does say, so you say. And then it's on Pilate to play his part in the gospel going forward. From that confrontation with Pilate, the Calvary Road was where Jesus was found. So Jesus was crucified. And you can easily find a lot of detail about the crucifixion. Not always helpful to go into all that detail, but it is, I think, for today, helpful to know that the very mechanics of the horrible death of crucifixion involves a continual pressure and minimizing capacity to even breathe with all the pain and lifting up and then going back down on those nails of crucifixion lungs of Jesus were compressed and the breath was increasingly difficult and painful and yet as we know in the scriptures Jesus followed. Jesus was determined to speak with whatever breath he could find. And he says, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And script and preachers and theologians have rightly taken that word and extended it to us all. In the sins of individuals, in the sins of communities, in the brokenness and injustice of all of our relations and systems, Jesus enters into and says, forgive them, for they ultimately really do not know what they are doing, who is their creator, and the gift of wholeness and salvation that I bring. And that final word from the cross, Jesus, after saying into your hands, I commit my spirit, Jesus breathed his life. And so we breathe with Jesus this morning in hearing the invitation to forgiveness. That was not the last word. Resurrection is Christ's experience and the experience of the church. All the Gospels were written through the lens of that experience of resurrection and God's love triumphant. As Paul said, if Jesus were not raised, our faith is in vain. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And on that journey in the road to Emmaus, as Jesus was bringing comfort and words to those who were looking and wondering, Jesus sat with them and broke bread as we will do. And then as our window declares, as the scripture declares, Jesus was then known in the breaking of the bread. Word of God, blessing on the elements of bread and wine, which we shall do. And so today at Bethesda, we are invited to breathe the breath of Jesus as the bread of God is given, as the cup is given. And then finally for this morning, Recalling our bookending scripture and Jesus after crucifixion and teaching and resurrection is about to send the Spirit entrusting the gospel to you and I, to the church, and says, speaks, breathes, go and make disciples, go and teach, and as you go, as you teach, as you share, as you live, as you breathe, I am with you always. Part of that 
Jesus being with us always, is our experience of our spiritual life. Here is a breath prayer for us to carry into our going and teaching and living and breathing. You know, oftentimes it's hard for me to sleep because I'm ruminating, I'm thinking about the day. And really, that's just my false self, kind of thinking about things. It's just me not accepting reality. But I have to remember that I am a spiritual, intellectual, physical, emotional human being. I'm made up of these different overlapping and interlocking parts. So sometimes I have to incorporate my body as I pray. So the spiritual and the physical come together. And a great prayer that's been around for centuries has been what's called the Jesus Prayer, where you say, Lord Jesus Christ on the inhale, have mercy on me, a sinner, on the exhale. It's a very simple prayer, but it's just a way to surrender every part of you to God. Another one is just repeating a phrase, Holy Spirit, holy on the inhale, spirit on the exhale. Or the word Jesus, or the word mercy, or the word peace. And I promise you, if you surrender these deeper dimensions of who you are, God will meet you and he will overflow into every aspect of your being. God coming to us as we are, body, mind, and spirit. A very worthwhile exercise. Remembering the breath of Jesus incarnate through Mary, through teaching, through healing, through crucifixion and resurrection. And if you want to carry away practice into your sharing and teaching and living, make it a practice. And I would suggest a great way to start is simply that suggestion of saying the breath prayer of Jesus. Jesus, on the end, Jesus, Jesus on the inhale, Jesus on the exhale. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Go and teach. Go and breathe with Jesus. You know, oftentimes we gather to celebrate Holy Communion. Our celebration of communion now begins, and we do so with a prayer of approach. Let us pray. Loving God, who speaks to us as the breath of life and the breath of Jesus, as we come to your table, we remember the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. May this bread and wine be for us a means of grace, drawing us closer to you and to one another. Heavenly Father, as we come to this table, we confess our brokenness to you and ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us and make us worthy by your grace to partake in this holy sacrament. And in the words of thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. We lift our breath to the Lord in thanksgiving and in praise. For it is right to give God our thanks and our praise. And so as we gather, as we breathe together and take in the breath of Jesus and your spirit, we thank you, Lord, for this gift of communion. As we partake, bread and the cup, may we be filled with your love and grace, and may we be strengthened to go forth and to speak your word, to breathe your breath, and be your light into the world. Now hear these words. Our Lord, on the night when he was at the table with the disciples, took bread and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. In the same way, he took the cup and after giving thanks and pouring it out, he said, 
This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, which is given for each of you. Every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death and the resurrection of the Lord until he comes. Lord God, by your Spirit, be in the sharing of the bread and the cup. Breathe, be with your people. Be with us, your bread of life, your cup of salvation. Amen. The bread is broken, the cup is poured. <clears throat> Come and take in the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Please come and share now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we dedicate ourselves to you as we have partaken in this sacrament of Holy Communion. Use us for your purposes. Speak and continue to speak through us that this bread of life and this cup of salvation may empower us to live and to love as your faithful disciples. sharing in our unison prayer after communion. Pray together. What has passed our lips as food and drink, O Lord, may we now possess in purity of heart and in each breath may that what is given to us in time be our healing for eternity. May your body, O Lord, which we have eaten, and your blood, which we have drunk, cleave to our souls. We humbly beseech you, Almighty God, to grant that we who be refreshed with your sacraments may serve you day by day, breath by breath, in a life well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns, world without end. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning, Breathe on me, breath.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving, breathing, living God, we thank you today for your breath of life in Jesus to us all. Your breath of life in Jesus, teaching with authority, declaring blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, breathing calm to the storms and to the storms of our lives, breathing forgiveness on the cross, and breathing the words of institutions and sacraments, take ye, this is my body, take and drink, Blood of the new covenant, the new wine of the kingdom. And so we thank you for all of this, the breath of Jesus on our lives, on our church, and in our journey. Continue to call us, continue to lead us, continue to shape us, to go and make disciples, to go and live a disciple's life breath and word of healing and hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, the breath of life, who calls us to pray in words and in breath together, the prayer he gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Offertory.
Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this Spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, in the breath of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the peace of the Spirit, the elements of bread and the cup, in all that we have heard, in all that we have taken in, in all that we have breathed in, may we now exhale the Spirit of Christ as we go into our paths, our homes, and our journeys. And may the peace of God be with you this day and all.